Welcome to KELA's Let's Talk About It. Discussions on a variety of topics of interest to Southwest Washington area listeners. Write down our listener call in number and keep it handy. 330-5352. That's 330-KELA. You're invited to join in with your calls now at 330-KELA. Views expressed on this show are those of the host, guests, and callers and are not necessarily those of the station, its management, or advertisers. Daily programs are recorded for playback, podcasts, and promotional purposes. And now, let's talk about it. Good morning, and welcome back to the Let's Talk About It show on AM 1470 KELA, or streaming at KELAAM.com. I'm your host today on this special Friday edition of the Let's Talk About It show. I'm your host, Peter Abarno. Give us a call here at 360-330-5352. My special guest today for our uh, really an annual show though we we give you updates every year about what's what's different about or what we're doing about the forgotten children's fund and today i have kim with him with me today to talk about the forgotten children's fund she organized this we were just talking about it off air i think 2016 we started in 2013 but i think you came on as a santa in in 2016 2017 we have a little debate going on yeah i think it was 2016 or 2017 you started in 2013 mm-hmm. right yeah, and so and so let's talk a little bit let's give a little bit of background for for the folks listening on what the forgotten children's fund is and then we'll get into kind of the history of how you got involved and you know what we've done in the past what we're doing in the future how people can help out and in which families are chosen and how that process works but let's start with what is the forgotten children's fund well the forgotten children's fund is an all-volunteer nonprofit organization started in 1976 by a, uh, a group of attorneys actually out of seattle and a and a restaurant owner that found a letter that was left by a little boy named craig and he was asking santa not to forget him so a bunch of well-intentioned attorneys wow that sounds familiar (laughs) um uh, we got together and helped start the forgotten children's fund so Mm -hmm. what does it what what's kind of the premise of the forgotten children's Fund? like what what does it do well our mission is really clear that as an all-volunteer organization we work to give underprivileged children and their families a truly merry christmas and with the support of our seattle uh, location, Lewis County communities were able to purchase, wrap, and personally deliver gifts every year by Santa and his team of elves. So the the Forgotten Children's Fund, the, the origin story is that uh, they f- th- these folks found a letter at Francisco's, is that right? Correct. Written it was, by Craig. Correct. Mr. Dick Francisco was the owner of the restaurant. And they found this letter that was left behind in the restaurant and actually for years spent time trying to find the original author of this letter. And um, I don't know. Do you want to read it? Yeah. So so what this this letter was written by a little boy named Craig uh, in 1976. They found this letter mm-hmm. and and Kim and I, for a number of years, have have kind of played the, the rock, paper, scissors game on who's going to read it because it always chokes us up. But it, but it's so important to read because. It, it really pulls on the heartstrings of why the Forgotten Children's Fund was formed, and even more importantly, why you and, and your husband, Mark, uh, had really gravitated to this program and started. So, it, it, rock, paper, scissors, am I losing? You're, you're All right. it. So, so, I lost it. So, so I'll, I'll read it and I'll try to do my best. Uh, the letter written by Craig that they found in the restaurant in 1976 says, uh, Dear Santa... Mama said you got lost last year, (laughs) you know, and couldn't find your way to our house. Uh, We uh, really missed you, uh, especially my little sister. Please come this year. Santa, we are being very good. Mama says you'll get lost again, maybe. So here is a map. Love, Craig. P.S. Don't leave anything for dad, daddy, uh, because he isn't here anymore. I mean, it's a your eyes just yeah i know you're because i choke up every time because anybody with a heart anybody who's had kids anybody who has seen poverty in their neighborhood in the streets knows the 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 kind of story they know these kids yeah and they're out there and it's not like this is a letter that just randomly it's some some anonymous i mean it is anonymous but 
you can actually look around your community and put a face to this letter and change the name from Craig to somebody else. And that's mm-hmm. what's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. You know, we have a team of about 14, 16 screeners that work tirelessly solid for two weeks reading letters just like this and working with these families to create that magic of Christmas. Because at the end of the day, I really think what we're doing is we're breathing some hope and light and love into these families to give them a little bit of a hand up to get launched into the new year and hopefully just forget about the scenario that they may have going on for about 30 to 40 minutes. Yeah, and we talk about this for a lot in, in our community in so many different ways, talking about inter- ending intergenerational poverty, trying to trying to some, inject hope into a child or a family. And the Forgotten Children's Fund plays such a, a integral role in that hope because it's not merely about let's give the kid a Lego set. Um, it, it's about let's make sure the family has food on the table. Let's mm-hmm. show this child that our community or the community cares about them because a lot of times these kids feel hopeless. They feel yeah. nobody cares. And and not just children, families, parents who are, are, are down on their luck. Yeah, it is the hardest job of the whole organization, I must say, is the screeners who communicate um, with the families and are really digging deep by listening and loving on these families enough to get the right help in the right direction to lift them up and meet them where they need to be met. So we talked a little bit about um, how Craig's letter, heartbreaking, and and I'm sure Kim will make us read it again at the end because it it, it is important because of how impactful it is and how how it's really created such a passion with the Forgotten Children's Fund generally and, and here in Lewis County as well. Uh, but how did you how did you get involved? I mean, obviously this is, was something that was impactful to you and, and, and Mark, uh, mm-hmm. your husband, and and but just just I mean you could have just given them a hundred bucks or twenty five bucks, but you didn't. You've put in so much time. Yeah, there's there it's a year round project. Um, Mark and Mark was on a marketing committee up with Les Schwab when he was a manager with Les Schwab for many many years, and so they went to the Rap Center one year and up up at our big warehouse that we have up north. And when he was there, he just came back, lit up, and just changed and said, I think you should come with me. And Mark and I had been doing some similar things, very small, small scale. I mean, we're like talking four or five families, just privately here in Lewis County. And um, when we went up there, they offered to help us. I think it was like 2013. And I think we served about 10 families, maybe 2014, excuse me. We served 10 families that year. And um, we, I went to bed with a dream and I said, I want to help 100 families. And Mark's like, yeah, okay. And he just, he knew that that would be a grand scale, right? And we've grown it over the years with the support of our community and our parent organization up in Seattle. And like last year, for example, we were able to touch over 160 families with the ice storm. Yeah, 160 families. And I remember that ice storm. Um, it, 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 in statewide, when I look at the, the vastness of the organization, I mean, you went from 10, it was a 10 families the first year? Yeah. 10 families the first year to how many now? We've we did go out clear up one time to 265 and we realized it was just too much for our capacity so we we really like to stick around that 160 number 175 it's right. kind but of the, top but that's a huge growth and it's a, it it, it's a it's a sign there's a huge need there there is probably this is the biggest year of need i've ever seen yeah and last year i was just looking at uh for, i was on forgottenchildrensfund.org which is their the the parent uh kind of organization that you were talking about they delivered 20,000 gifts to deserving children and families. Uh, they helped over 700 families and over 2,100 children. Yeah. And it just shows that this is not, this is a, this is a movement in a way, yeah. um, but it's not a movement where it's just a handout, right? It, it, it's about providing hope for these kids, hope to these families. And you do a lot more than just the Lego set. We do. We, so t- talk about like, especially because I've been in these homes before yeah. and I've seen families cry when not just the presence 
and seeing the the joy on their kids, but when you go to their kitchen yeah. and talk about that. So we train all of our elves and Santas um, for things to look for. And when they go into the home, if there's a need for food that is spotted, we have it available. Um, last year we got to a house and there was an overwhelming amount of debris that needed to be removed and we had a volunteer who just was super choked up about that organized a group of men took a dump trailer over got it all taken care of we got to another house one of the late night stops and you remember it was frozen last year we really had a hard time delivering and by the grace of god we were able to get about two-thirds of our deliveries out the door and there was a heater need right and so we have someone who can go run and grab a heater um, from Home Depot and bless this family with the ability to have heat. So there's a lot of magic that goes deeply rooted into um, what we do. And a lot of that just stems from the hearts of our volunteers. That isn't something that's normal. We never know what we're going to get or what we, you know, we've had volunteers magically take, borrow a saw from a friend yeah. while they're on their way to a house and cut down a, a Christmas tree and deliver a Christmas tree. But I, I go back to that story. Remember the year that you were playing football with the little boy because he just, he needed somebody to play catch with. I saw that photo mm -hmm. um, when I was preparing for the show and it really always hits a chord because we went to a home and I believe it was somewhere in the South Thurston County and we, uh, maybe, well, I mean, it could have been on PL area, but, um, cause we've done so many sadly. Um, but we gave the little boy a football and he was so excited. And then you saw his face. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here dressed up as Santa Claus. And he says something like, I, I wish I had someone to play catch with. Yeah. Oh, my. You know, it just, it's it's heartbreaking. And so Santa went outside and played catch mm -hmm. uh, in the front yard. And it was just, you know. It's you, magic. You cannot. I, I remember my wife, because she was an, an elf that year, mm -hmm. too. And I remember she walked away. And I was like, is she like mad I'm playing football with this, this little boy? And she was behind the trailer crying. I mean, yeah. it was just, everybody was just, it was so sad and happy. It was, it was just so many mixed emotions, but it's the reason why we do it year after year. And I think that our volunteers get just as much joy for their holiday season as the families who are receiving, correct? Because yeah. they're putting their love and light into others and there's just... You know, when we come back at the end of the day of volunteering and there's this dinner that's sponsored by the Moose Lodge and there's, you know, 125 volunteers dressed as elves and Santas, there's some magic that's happened that day in our community. And it's it's heartwarming to launch yeah. you into the, the weekend for Christmas. And you need it because you're emotionally drained afterwards, physically and emotionally. Because <laughs> yeah, it's a long day of delivering. It is a long day. It it's, is a long day. We're so, going to pray for no ice. So before we go on, I'd love to – so let's give the listeners – so if they want to get involved, they want to donate, uh, how would they get in contact with you? Because I know there's people out there who are like, this is great. I want to get involved. How well, do I? There's a couple ways. We are always accepting new coats, new blankets, new socks, uh, toys, and financial donations. And those can be taken to any Centralia or Chehalis Les Schwab or any security state bank branch, which has been an amazing partnership over the last couple years. They've really helped us. Mail Plus Chehalis also has a donation box. And then today, of all things, Lewis County Title is doing a toy drop and drives. You could drive over today and tomorrow and drop your toys or your donations at Lewis County Title, and they will make sure that uh, we get those as well. And will they have a toy drop? Uh, and they all, all the businesses that you named also have toy drops next week as well, right? Oh, yeah. You Our can drop toy drops go clear through the 18th of December. Yeah, and, and there's there's definitely a need for that. And, and in addition to toys, I mean, we provide books. Correct. Um, Stockings. So, yeah, food gift cards. We do give. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there, it, it, it's really, it, and again, for me, I think some of the most impactful is when you walk into the kitchen and you stock their kitchen for a, a, a Christmas meal. Correct. Yep. I mean, that's so important that's to have that right. tradition. Yeah. So w what are some of the things that, like if somebody said, hey, I want to donate, um, I don't have the cash, can they give you like gift cards? They can, they can give gift cards to grocery stores. Um, that's that's handy, you know, groceries aren't, aren't expensive 
inexpensive right now. Wait, there's inflation? <laughs> yeah. like, wait, things Todd are more expensive? Not good. Yeah. So, you know, and that's that's some of over the last couple days as I've been working through getting our 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 applications processed to the RAP Center, you know, that's that's a big underlying thing that I'm seeing is there's just more month at the end of our money. Yeah. With the same job that they've been doing, there's just more month because of the cost of things. Yeah. No, I mean, people are getting hit hard. And, you know, we don't get political, but we get, uh, you know, we talk about the fact that gas prices are skyrocketing. And that trickles down. I mean, then every food and service, it just gets more expensive. And it's a regressive thing because the people who can least afford to pay for it are the ones that get hit the hardest, right? Well, and I was reading an application. There's a mom that's trying to take her child... Um, they had a cleft palate and trying to get up to children's in Seattle. And, you know, if you're having to take time off work and you're not making those hours, what starts, what comes first, right? And then the gas price to get up there. And, and we just want to lift that family up right where they need to be bet. And I know that uh, the folks listening right now uh, want to help too. So we're going to be back in just a moment with, uh, after listening to some of our sponsors, but stay tuned to Let's Talk About It on AM 1470 KELA with Kim with them, and we're talking about the Forgotten Children's Fund. Are you curious about buying or selling real estate? If the current market is making you nervous and you're looking for some good real estate advice from a local agent with a proven reputation, I'm Heather Stewart with Blade Realty and I'm ready to help you. Let's weigh your options so you can make wise choices when it comes to buying, selling, or investing in real estate. Even with the spike in interest rates, there's still a strong housing demand and low inventory. Let's find out how to make this market work for you. For stellar service and all things real estate, find me on Facebook at Heather Stewart Realtor or online at heatherstuartrealtor.com. If you need a Kubota that works and plays hard, stop looking. You'll find everything you need at Jennings Equipment. When it comes to tough Kubota tractors, mowers, construction equipment, and utility vehicles, all with low rate financing, Jennings Equipment is your one-stop shop. They strive to offer customers a wide variety of quality products and back those items with a well-stocked parts department and highly qualified and professional service staff. Two great locations, Jennings Equipment Chehalis, 244 Hamilton Road, Puyallup on River Road, and JenningsEquipment.com. Hey, it's Sam from Nomad Truck and SUV Outfitters. Matt, you mean Nomad Truck and Lear Canopy. Sam, what do you mean Nomad Truck and Lear Canopy? You heard me right, Matt. Nomad Outfitters is forever growing and changing to better service our customers. As the only Lear dealer now in Lewis County, we're here for all your truck bed protection. From canopies to coatings, tonneau covers to storage, we have you covered. Nomad Truck and SUV Outfitters and Lear Canopy will be your one-stop shop for all your canopy needs. Wow, Sam, that's great news. Nomad is going to be busy. Now you offer overlanding, lift kits, wheels, tires, window tint, and bed liners, but Lear Canopies and covers too. Nomad Truck and Lear Canopy are here to service all your canopy needs. From work to fun, from camping to storing, we have you covered. Give us a call or stop by the shop on Kresge in Chehalis to see what we can do for you. Nomad Truck and SUV Outfitters and Lear Canopy. Let us help you find your road. Okay, and now back to business. Listen on the air and online. Online. K E L A. <laughs> Let's talk about it. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk About It and 1470 K E L A. On the Let's Talk About It show, I'm your host, Peter Obarno, on this special edition of Let's Talk About It, where we're talking about the Forgotten Children's Fund. I'm here with Kim Witham, and Kim, we just heard a, a advertisement from Heather Stewart, who is one of our elves. She is. She's been with us from the beginning and just pours her heart into our organization. I think she's on your team again this year. You guys will be heading out with your sleigh. I thought about Heather yesterday. Um, I was watching uh, Trolls, the holiday special. Okay. And uh, you remember the glitter troll? Mm -hmm. It like they had a glitter holiday because Heather Stewart really glitters it up. Yeah. yeah. So so it's it's just funny because all the elves do, but I always yeah. I always laugh with her because there was like glitter on her eyelashes and yep. it, it 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 it's it is so cool to see people get throw their hearts in like you said. Um, she puts everything into it, and so do so many elves. I mean. We get dressed up as Santa Claus. I actually bought right. my own suit I know, uh, because I was, we do it so much. We were upgrading, I, upgrading yes. from my Walmart suit. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. And the elves do too because the kids just especially, uh, uh, 
uh, with the elves, especially with the elves that are the girls with all the glitter. Yeah. The little girls are just always in awe. Yeah. Of yeah. the glitter elves. Yeah, and it's it's uh it's a great clean out of the vehicle when you're done elfing for the year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a lot of explaining to do. There's uh, glitter everywhere. Yeah. Um but it but it's so much fun and and so when we deliver so we normally pile into a car, which is right. kind of the lead car, and then we're followed traditionally by, you know, either a, a rental or a sleigh. Yeah. Um, how do, man, that how does that work? Well, uh, Mark like, is amazing at scheduling all the routing and getting all the drivers and getting all the teams together, and that's a stress that I um, see behind the scenes, yep. and it's that's deep, but it is amazing what happens and the people that come you know there's still opportunity to volunteer you can see us on the lewis county forgotten children's fund facebook page and that's a great place to um, connect with us there and of course we're always trying to collect um, some family gift certificates from shopping cart they have a great family package yep. for dinner and those are being collected this year by academy mortgage in centralia right off of main street and so you could drop your gift certificate there, um, which is a, we're so grateful that they do that. They've helped out every year. Yeah. And um, of course, you can take your toys and financial donations right over to Centralia Shahela Slash Schwab or any security state bank. Yeah. And it, it, we were just talking during the break that it's funny because I still have a Forgotten Children's Fund box in my office. Awesome. And, it, you know, we don't we used to advertise it a lot more than we do now. Um, I mean, we still advertise it, but a lot of times we just get gifts and toys and books from my staff and who will come in. And we appreciate that yeah. so much because, you know, it is hard when you go into these apartment buildings, for example, <clears throat> or a, a, a manufactured home park that there's a couple around that I can think of. And we've gone in there. You, as Santa, you can't not give out gifts to other children because you're Santa. And so we, we get stopped and... And we definitely provide for those that, you know, aren't necessarily on our route, but we make sure that it's believable. Yeah. And a lot of times when we go to apartment complexes or mobile home parks, there's an address or a specific unit we're going to or a family that we're, we're there to help. But other kids will come oh, out, yes. uh, come out and right. see Santa. And we want to make sure that they're not left behind. I mean, the yeah. worst thing to do would be to show up and say, I don't have anything for you, kid. Um, they're in need too. So we try to provide those. And a lot of those extra toys and gifts and books we collect, like in my office, go to that. Amen. Yeah. yeah that's what we do. We just keep spreading joy. And, you know, I always love the, the restaurant stops, the coffee shops. You know, I, I think there's kids of all ages, including um, a, a genre that might have silver hair. Yeah. Um, and those, those adults that they remember believing in the magic of Christmas, and I think it's fun. There are a number of times that we've walked up and down the streets of Centralia, popped into a Blarney's. We've 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 stopped at like a Starbucks in the uh, in the drive-through lane. Oh yeah, and just walked and handed out if the kid was in the car or if anybody wanted a candy cane. We did that. So if you're looking, there's there's no real donation, big or small, that, that you're not going to accept. So no. even if you brought in a pack of you know. Uh, candy canes. Candy canes. We'll I mean, we're going to use them. We're going to pass them out to people in the community and just raise that level of hope and cheer and happiness. Yeah. I, I really think at the end of the day, if we could all just spread a little bit of love and light into each other, it does make our our holiday season just a little bit easier. It sure does. And, you know, one of the things that I want to touch on before we go, because we've talked about the needs in our community. We've talked about why there's need in our community. How do we choose the families? Because that's important for people to maybe understand, because I know that you spend a lot of time, you talk about applications, uh, learning about some of these families and kids that need help. How do you how do you figure that out? We work closely with every single school in our county and South Thurston. And we also work with like ECAP and Head Start. And one of the most magical things is we have these wonderful counselors and school authorities that partner with us and nominate the families as they come in and you know we receive those emails and we have trained an incredible amount of volunteers to help just really connect with that family we go so far as to make sure everyone realizes they've been nominated um, we're careful on our verbiage right because we don't ever want someone to think oh we're calling because you are trying to get charity that's that's not our organization 
we really are about a hand up. Yeah, yeah, and and you do a good job of it. So let's make sure we touch on if there's somebody out there listening to the show who wants to donate, whether it's a business or an individual, and, and we talked about this, it's whether big or small, um, how can they get in contact with you or the organization, and where are those drops again? So if someone's driving around, you know, a lot of times I go to like Safeway, I could pick up an extra pack of, you know, candy canes, or if there's something that I just want to buy one extra, where would I drop that off? You can go to any uh, Security State Bank branch. You can also go to Centraya Chehalis Les Schwab, Mail Plus in Chehalis. And then, of course, the meal certificates from Shopping Cart are being collected by Academy Mortgage in Centraya on Main Street. Yeah, and, and there's, how many volunteers do you have? How many Santas and elves? Because that that's another, I mean, we talked about Mark's coordination. He does a great yeah. job. So we are looking somewhere around 175 families this year, give or take. I might be, I might get over and that might be, get me in trouble, but that takes about 20 Santas. And then mm -hmm. they each have somewhere between four to six elves and then a driver per team. So you're about, we're hunt, we have a right around 125 volunteers. Yeah, every season. And and you train them, you talk to them about, you know, what to identify because Santas and elves are not in there to investigate. We're not no. CPS. We're there to no. we're there to provide, you know, they've accepted. They they want these this hand up. Um and and we go in there and just provide that, right? Well, we provide a magical Christmas blessing, right? Yeah. It's this magical Christmas experience and when the elves are in the home, they can feel what's going on we always have an elf stay with santa and by the tree and then um as we put away the food for the food baskets we typically have an elf that is available to see is there a need that we could fulfill from our sleigh yeah and sometimes there is and sometimes you know there's not a need and so we we have given hugs and in that pocket moment we've given a gift card to yeah. A grocery store because we see the need right yep. no different than um i remember one time we got to a home peter and they were heating their home with a smoky joe barbecue yep. and within minutes i was calling back to mark who runs the warehouse that day and thankful so thankful that he does that because that's that's a tough job right you're getting 125 herded glittery cats out the door right <laughs> at 8 30 in the morning and um so when we called back to the warehouse, he was able to get a heater and we were able to get that delivered right away. So, you know, things like coats and hats and gloves and socks, toys, books, you know, blankets, those donations can all still be taken to Security State Bank, um, Centralia Shalis, Les Schwab, Mail Plus. And bikes. And bikes. The year, the year we gave a little boy a bike and the, the, the sister, I mean, was like, um, I mean, we deliver on the 23rd, right? Correct. Yeah. We do deliver so on the So I think you ended up going back to the warehouse that night. Mm -hmm. And then on the Christmas, was it Christmas Eve? You brought another bike yeah, for her? Yeah, so Heather, yeah. your elf, uh, you guys were out on route, and she saw it and came back and said, I got to go buy a bike. Well, we happened to have one because there was one boy who really wanted one and one boy who was getting one. And I, we kind of made that a rule. And... Um, so Heather and I trekked back out there on Christmas Eve, yep. and that little boy flew the door open. I'm not going to be able to say it without getting teary. And he's like, I'm so thankful Santa did not forget me. I yeah. knew you wouldn't forget me. So that's what this is really about. It's about the impact. And, and, and I think one thing I want to leave uh, our listeners, I'm sure you do too, is that this has a lifelong impact on these kids. Yes, for sure. We've had volunteers come back so grateful and volunteer after they've been a recipient so. yeah i mean just just amazing and thank i you. i want to thank you and and mark uh for all you do for our community and the forgotten children's fund and i i really urge you if you listen to this show and you're looking for a way to get involved uh this is a way to get involved uh, to support the forgotten children's fund either through your business or as an individual um and uh we're gonna start ramping up right i gotta yeah. try on my suit make sure hey, it still fits thank you so much for all your time and effort yeah you always do to thank you kim and thank you for being here thank you for tuning into the let's talk about it show here on am 1470 kela and kelaam.com i'm your host peter barno and you just heard a great episode with kim with them with the lewis county forgotten children's fund have a great happy weekend and uh, support the forgotten children's fund thank you Stay in 